Today, these adapters are causing GPUs to melt. AMD confirms AM5 longevity, Ryzen 8000G APUs get pricing, and desktop Ryzen 8700G's gaming performance is unreal. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, the story of the melting 4090 GPUs seems like it'll never end. First we thought it was all user error from not connecting things properly, then it seemed more people were still having this issue. Finally, a new 16 pin connector was released to fix the issue that was supposedly user error. And now, one of the original solutions to fix it is apparently defective. In a new post by CableMod, the company is recalling all of their 90 and 180 degree version 1.0 and 1.1 adapters, all because of the quote, potential risk that the male connector could become loose, overheat, and melt into the GPU. So yeah, they're apparently causing the issue they were trying to solve. According to this, it only affects their angled adapters and not their angled cables, but for anyone who has one of these adapters, stop using it immediately. Luckily, they do tell customers to reach out to their customer service if they had a GPU that was affected by their adapters. Really, I just feel like there's a serious issue with this connector in general, though hopefully the updated one fixes all these issues. Next up for today, the release of AMD's Ryzen CPUs back in 2017 showed everyone the power of competition, forcing Intel to give it everything they had just to not get left in the dust by AMD. But that release didn't just come with amazing CPUs. It also came with a fantastic socket, AM4. Through that one platform, AMD released four generations of CPUs, and while they did release new boards along the way, they mostly kept support for newer CPUs, and they're still releasing new CPUs for it to this day. With that said, when AMD announced its successor, the AM5 platform, the company didn't seem as hopeful about its longevity. Sure, they said that they wanted it to last as long, and they did mention 2025, but they didn't seem all that sure, at least to me. Well, in a new video from Overclockers UK, AMD's corporate VP and general manager, David McAfee, was asked about AM5's longevity, and he said this. We certainly recognize that the longevity of the AM4 platforms was one of the biggest reasons that led to the success of Ryzen. Um, and as we think about the future, 2025 and beyond, you know, that decision to move to a, a, a next generation of socket is one that's going to be really thought through very, very carefully. Um, we know the impact that moving to a new socket brings and we wanna stay on AM5 as long as we possibly can. So, you know, we are firmly committed to 2025 and beyond and uh, we'll see how long that that promise lasts beyond 2025. So yeah, they're claiming 2025 plus, and given Zen 5 base Ryzen should be coming next year, we could very well see AM5 platform support up to Zen 6. Not only that, but given the plus sign, they may further release new CPUs, even when their AM6 platform releases, just like they've done with AM4. At the end of the day, AM5 looks like it may very well be another long-lasting platform, if only they would bring down the prices. Next up, we're starting to see prices on AMD's next-gen desktop Ryzen 8000G APUs, along with some upcoming CPUs. The information comes from a couple new posts by known leaker Momomo underscore US, and as you can see, he posted prices that have apparently been listed in three different online stores. Starting things off, we have the next-gen desktop APUs, starting with the Ryzen 8700G. This one is between $340 US and a whopping $440. Now, that may sound really bad, but keep in mind that prices before launch are typically much higher than actual MSRP. And the $440 shop sells the 7600 for much higher than pretty much anyone. In fact, at the lower end $340, it would make the 8700G cheaper than the 5700G at launch. So this could be a really good buy, especially given the performance that I'll show you in a few. Next is the 8600G, which is between $240 and $310, and the 8500G is between $190 and $200. $140. So given they do end up being the lower end of that price scale, next-gen desktop APUs could be a pretty decent price, especially given all the inflation and everything. Next, we have the long-rumored 5700X3D CPU, which is being priced at between $260 and $340. And this, I think, shows exactly why we can't trust the higher-end prices. It would make the 5700X3D more expensive than the 5800X3D is going for right now. And obviously, AMD wouldn't do that, so I definitely 
definitely look towards the lower end pricing. Next we have a 5700 non-G model, which doesn't come with an iGPU, and that one is listed on one site for $180. Finally are a couple lower end GT SKUs, the 5600 GT, which is between $150 and $200, and the 5500 GT, which is between $130 and $180. Ultimately, this makes me pretty excited for AMD's next gen APUs. And lastly for today, we have our first benchmark on AMD's upcoming 8700G desktop APU. And from it, we're even able to get some gaming performance. Starting things off, we have a couple benchmarks from Geekbench, where you can see it's the 8-core 16-thread 8700G that gets benchmarked. And you'll notice right next to it that it comes with the Radeon 780M iGPU. Remember that this is the GPU built into the higher-end Ryzen 7040 APUs. Of course, we pretty well knew this would be the case, but now that we have this benchmark, it's essentially guaranteed. And to further prove this, when we compare these GPU benchmarks, we can see the 8700G gets essentially the same score as the 7940HS. The 8700G is actually slightly better, but that's probably because of the thermal headroom of it being on a desktop instead of a notebook. The CPU performance is even better, but that's because the 8000 series should come with the XDNA NPU. Either way, this means we can actually take a 7040 chip with a Radeon 780M in it and compare it to the current best desktop APU, the 5700G, to see just how much better the gaming performance will be. And if anything, the 8700G's actual performance should be slightly better. Remember that the 5700G is still using a Vega iGPU, and it only has 8 CUs, while the Radeon 780M inside the 8700G has 12 CUs and is based on RDNA 3, so a huge jump in every way. And that's why when we look at the 5700G versus the 7840HS by this YouTuber, which is actually really close to what the 8700G should be with their CPU as well. And from this, we can see it gets around double the performance. In some cases, it can actually get way better than double. Basically, Andy's upcoming desktop APUs, rumored to launch early next month, are set to destroy the low-end discrete GP market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen desktop APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.